if you want to trade like a rebel, you got to come to RebelCon 2022. It's going to be in Dallas, Texas at the fabulous Four Seasons Resort. It will be more fun and more live trading than we've ever done before. That's why it's called RebelCon 2022. We're going to have barbecues and double the amount of live trading. The guest speakers, as soon as we announce those, this thing's gonna be sold out, limited to 250 people. Sign up now for RebelCon 2022 at the Four Seasons in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Rebellion. Good morning. I'm Pete Najeri, and this is The Take on this Monday morning as we kick off another week. And we've had a lot of strong weeks in a row. As a matter of fact, going back to last week, those inflation numbers were a little bit better than probably expected. And because of that, we absolutely started moving to the upside. A really nice move. When you look at the Dow for the week, up about 700 points. NASDAQ up a couple of hundred points. It was a pretty solid week all the way around. Matter of fact, crude went from 87 to 92. Everything seemed to be moving to the upside. As a matter of fact, on Friday itself, we closed up more than 400 points on the Dow and we closed up 260 points on the NASDAQ. So a big chunk of those gains really coming in the latter part of the week and specifically on Friday, just a really a massive move to the upside. You look at the volatility index, closed underneath 20. That's something we hadn't seen in quite a long time. So that was pretty interesting as well. Finished the week right around 1950. We had a great volume week as well. Talked about it here all week, but Friday finished the week with 43.3 million contracts trading. So again, very, very strong and above the year-to-date average of a little over 40 and a half million. So that was something big as well. We had every single sector finish in the green on Friday. Just an absolutely across the board, big sweep as far as that's concerned. Consumer discretion was the leader, up about two and a half percent, along with, and I realize this is a subsector, but the semiconductors, which also had a really nice, particularly closing part of the week, but it was NVIDIA, it was AMD. We look at Tesla and Amazon in terms of some of those consumer discretionaries. You look at technology as well. Apple, just an absolutely outrageous move once again for a monster stock that it is. The multi-trillions that the market cap are still had a really strong move as well. When you look at Netflix, adding to that as well as Meta, really pretty impressive. You look at the materials, it was U.S. Steel, it was Cliffs, it was across the board, everything. Newcore, everything seemed to be really participating there with materials up a couple of percent as well. We had financials up about one and a half percent. It was Morgan Stanley really with the lead there. Not as much Goldman. It was Morgan Stanley. And then it was also JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, as far as the those that were really driving things to the upside. And even energy with that last, last, last part of the week move, really nice to see something like Conoco and Exxon. And then even Petrobras actually finished out the week. That, that's not where oil is today, by the way. And these names are all under some pressure. We'll get into that in just a second. So What were some of the biggest drivers of the week as far as last Friday? Well, you had those semiconductors, as I mentioned. It was on. It was applied materials, Micron, NVIDIA, all of those definitely adding to the upside along with Generac. Throw in Tesla. Now, Tesla has been very quietly just stair-stepping to the upside in that 900 range and above, kind of quietly as this has been moving, but just continues that path to the upside. Workday, Lucid, sticking with some of those in the EV space. Then you've got Disney. Disney just had a great week last week, continues a little bit even more this morning. You've got Merck, you got United Health, but it wasn't all rosy. We did have some pullers on the market as well. Illumina, after those earnings, that was getting hit pretty hammered to the downside pretty hard, actually. Then you look at J&J and you look at some of these other PDD and JD, as far as those Chinese names, we like to keep an eye on those as well. And a little bit more news about the Chinese as well today. After a really strong performance in the second half of last week, we started to give back a little bit in the pre-market. We were down almost 200 points on the Dow. We were down about 40 or 50 points on the NASDAQ. We started to make a little bit of a move. We definitely improved all the way back in terms of what was going on with the Dow, although we've slipped back now. We got into positive, pulled back a little bit. NASDAQ actually just been hanging around down, call it somewhere between five and about 30 points to the downside. So the NASDAQ 
not very volatile and just kind of holding on to where it is. But it's really been the movement specifically that we've been seeing in the Dow, at least early on. What's really, really moving today? How about crude? Down towards 87. Now, we finished the week, as I pointed out, from 87 to 92. We actually today are right back at that 87 level. Will we get a bounce? That's something that will be interesting to see how that plays out. You had the volatility index get back up above 20. We were 20 and a half. We were above 21 early on. We've given a little bit of that back. Two-year, just kind of about the same spot. You look at Nat Gas. That's pulled back about 3% today. Not a huge move, but, a, but pulling back after being up there at 880, back towards 850. But that's been something that's been on a nice, solid path to the upside, keeping a very close eye on that. We had Bitcoin last week, got well over that 24,000 level. We're still, even though we're down today, we're still above 24,000, about 24,100, something we're each all, of course, trying to keep a very close eye on. You've got energy. Energy down about 4%, somewhere between 3.8 and 4.3%. It's been wavering back and forth, but call it a 4% move to the downside. Definitely pulling on the markets, along with materials that were down early, about 1%. Financials are down a little bit early. Technology was down a little bit early. Staples, though, staples, which hadn't done much right out of the gate, started to move to the upside, up nearly three quarters of a percent, kind of giving a little bit of a buoy there. It's a big earnings week. We've got Walmart, we've got Target, we've got HD, we've got Lowe's. That's going to be a big week for retail. That's something we all be very, very focused on as we get throughout this week and the retailers come through. It feels a little bit quieter, but those are going to definitely be some market movers along the way. China, the growth in industrial production slower than expected. That was something that was really kind of giving the markets a little bit of a, well, you know, let's maybe get a little bit less bullish than we are. But it seems like the markets just sort of cast that aside and started that move to the upside. We'll see how this moves throughout the rest of the day. We're only in the first hour of trade. By the way, we got the Rebels Edge today as well, 1 p.m. Eastern. John's back from God knows where he was, Croatia or someplace or another. He's so he's always on the move. He's always traveling somewhere, but I believe he's back in the United States as of today. We'll see. We had a lot of movers this morning early. You had Moderna, you had Gilead, along with Tesla. Again, Tesla having a pretty solid start to the day. Clorox, I look at Disney, as I say, followed up last week's move with it a little bit more on the positive side. You've got Do Zoom, you've got DocuSign, you've got Datadog. Salesforce, those are some of those positives. Where are the negatives though? Freeport Mac, taking it on the chin. Those beta energy names that we talk about all the time. They're beta for a reason. They work in both directions, to the upside. And of course, as we fall back to the downside, APA, Marathon Oil, Baker Hughes, Devon, all taking it on the chin today. Pretty good with that big move that we're seeing out of crude. We also have names like Kraft Heinz pulling back a little bit. Chevron, of course, along with Exxon, along with Caterpillar, all those names in negative territory, at least early on. Now, we got two unusuals and we're out of here. Micron, trading somewhere close to $65. We had a buyer of 3400 of the October. That's what stuck out for me is this wasn't something where they're just looking here in August, September. They're going all the way to October, looking for the semiconductors, specifically, obviously, Micron to be making some sort of a move. We'll see if that happens. Stock was around 65. These are the October 65 calls. They were going for a pretty penny because of the fact that you are buying time. It's right at the money. So these were going for about $4.80. That's a lot of premium, something to keep an eye on and, and understand exactly how much risk is going into that trade. Gap stores, this one's a lot less risky. This is a name where you're sitting there right around 11 bucks a share. We got a buyer right out of the gate, 5,700 of the August 11 calls. Stocks right around 11. They're buying the 11s, 20 cents up to about 35 cents, but it's got to happen quick. We has, as you know, here we are in August. These expire in August. Gives you a little idea. You don't have a whole lot of time with these. Folks, hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. If not, get that education. We talk about it all the time. The derivatives world is phenomenal. You've got leverage. You've got all the things that you might want, but you also have to have an understanding of all the different the Greeks that go into the pricing and everything else. We got a great team here. You've got books. You've got anything on the internet. Gives you an opportunity to understand. But you you heard what I was talking about when I was talking about those volumes. 43 plus million contracts again today. Big week last week. We are now for August ahead of the yearly average pace that we were working at. We're starting to see a little bit more activity all the time. 
at the same time, you're seeing stocks actually get a little bit lower with activity. You're seeing more activity coming into the options world. That's something to keep in the back of your mind as well. I'm Pete Najarian. Have a great day of trading and market rebellion, the rebel's edge at one o'clock Eastern. Look for John and myself then. See you later.